Hello and welcome to the Sinusure HQIC Patient Family Engagement for Equity Think Tank Snapshot for July 2022. This month we talked all about the Patient Family Engagement for Equity or PFEE Hospital Self-Assessment. We plan to reassess hospitals with the PFEE Hospital Self-Assessment every six months. We're essentially promoting this assessment for all of you to use as a useful tool to find your starting point with engaging patients and family caregivers into quality improvement efforts. Part of the PFEE hospital self-assessment is the maturity model. It's really a no wrong door approach to understanding the current status of your hospital when it comes to PFEE. We also have guidance documents as a resource for your hospitals to help you move forward taking small steps. And I heard a quote recently that it's easier to ride a bike if it's moving. So that's what this maturity model is all about. It's giving you a starting point so you can continue to move forward. The first PFEE hospital self-assessment took place in January 2022, um, but I wanted to see who had completed the hospital self-assessment um, the second round in July of 2022. So about half were still working on it. They hadn't completed it yet, um, and that's okay. It does take a little bit of time to get through, um, but it's, it's all in an effort to learn more about your hospital's starting point and continuing to move forward. We did hear from some who had completed the hospital self-assessment and a few who were still interested in learning more about what the hospital self-assessment was all about. So we explain that in more detail. Here are the hospital self-assessment completion numbers by state. Um, as you can see, we still have a few states that are working on getting their assessment in, and that is quite all right. The original due date was July 19th, but it's not too late to get those um, PFEE hospital self-assessments in, the round two of those hospital self-assessments. Um, you can see that we have completion rates um, from Colorado with 19, and actually in Colorado, we have seen some early improvements at Gunnison Valley. They actually moved from storming to norming on that maturity model in metrics four and five. So they're on the right track to having a patient family engagement lead, and they have restarted their patient family advisory council. So congrats to Gunnison Valley. We also saw uh, Baylor Scott in Texas moved from norming to performing in metric two, which is the shift change huddle um, engagement. So congrats to those two hospitals and all of the other hospitals that are even taking the steps to complete the hospital self-assessment. Even if you've gone backwards, it's important to understand your starting point so you can take those small steps forward to engage patients and family caregivers in quality improvements. So all around uh, great work. Another hospital that we saw improvement from was Mason District Hospital in Illinois. They actually improved in six of the 12 measures, so congratulations to their hospital. One of the measures was bedside rounding um, or shift change. They went from norming to performing, so taking those small steps. And that means they went from doing shift change huddles for a small patient population to having a well-established process within the entire hospital. They also moved from norming to performing for the patient family engagement program. So that means they went from having an established patient family engagement committee to actually actively engaging patient family advisors on quality improvement projects. They also moved forward on the second half of the assessment, the health equity organizational assessment, and they moved forward on the communicating findings. They went from forming to norming. So that means they, they originally didn't have a reporting mechanism or an equity dashboard to show um, the information that they're collecting about the demographics of their patient population, but they moved to then using a dashboard to report to leadership and the board. Um, beyond that, they're then going to communicate their findings to the rest of the hospital and then their communities. So great work. If your hospital has not completed the assessment yet, I'm really curious, you know, what do you need in order to complete the self-assessment? What questions do you have? What more information do you need? If you have completed it, or even if you haven't yet, but
but you're in the planning process of what steps you need to take to move forward, I would love to hear, you know, where are you hoping to see your patient family engagement efforts um, progress at your hospital over the next six months? So I encourage you to let us know. You can email me, uh, Lindsay Galley at lindsay at pfccpartners.com with your questions or your goals. And I would love to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with you or, you know, share some of your successes and learn from your peers. I'll leave you today with a few resources. The next Patient Family Engagement for Equity Think Tank, we're going to be talking about that second half of the PFEE hospital self-assessment, which is collecting race, ethnicity, and language data. So we'll talk about that on Wednesday, August 10th. Please bring your questions, your best practices, your challenges. And also please consider signing up for a one-on-one -on -one coaching call, talking through some of these self-assessment results and getting new ideas on what steps you can take forward to move patient family engagement for equity forward at your hospital. Thank you. Hope to see you next month.